Welcome to the Strategy of the Week presentation for November 29th, 2013. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest, and I'll be providing your strategy presentation this evening. Tonight's presentation is titled Bubble Schmubble after last week's essay of the same name. From the home page, we'll go into the views, and let's look at last Friday. And in the overview section, we come to his essay, Bubble Schmubble. In his essay, Dr. Delito discusses market worry warts assertions that we're in a stock market bubble. He states in part, yes, some stock prices are absurdly high. That's why we calculate a current value for each and every stock in the database. He goes on to say that by analyzing the market as a whole, it's fully valued. But how can we avoid the overvalued positions? Well, let's begin in the stock viewer. We come back to the toolbar at the top and we click on viewers. And let's open the stock viewer. As you know, it's part of our mantra that we favor undervalued stocks because the undervalued stocks increase the odds of winning, increase the rewards of winning, and lower our downside risk. In the stock viewer, not only do we have the stock's current price, but we also have its value. If we right click on the line, we can go to the stock analysis report. And if we scroll down to value, we read the value is a measure of a stock's current worth. But of course there are many models to value a corporation. Here you can see we base our valuation on the financial performance of the company and the current economic climate. Value is computed from forecasted earnings per share, forecasted earnings growth, profitability, interest and inflation rates. Value increases when earnings, earnings growth rate and profitability increase and when interest and inflation rates decrease. VectorVest advocates the purchase of undervalued stocks. At some point in time, a stock's price and value always will converge. That definition gives you a sense for what's included in the calculation for our value. If you'd like more information on how we derive value, let me suggest these resources for you. First would be the little green book called Stock Strategies and Common Sense, written by Dr. Delito, provided as part of your trial package to VectorVest. How to Master the Market is a DVD presentation Dr. Delito gave. It's available in the online store if you'd like to see a spoken presentation of the model. And of course, a series of essays that were written in September of 2010, which are archived for you in the VectorVest views. Returning to the stock viewer, it's easy then to see whether or not a stock is under or overvalued. We simply compare the price to the value. If you want to make it even easier, you can left click on the value column and drag it next to the price column to make the comparison very easy. And here we can see that Universal is undervalued as the market has settled a price at $12.40 below its value of $16.80. And typically we say a stock is undervalued until its price is within plus or minus about 5% of its valuation. When it gets up more than 5% above the valuation, then it's an overvalued stock. And of course, if we graph the top 10 stocks here in VST descending order, we can look at the historical performance of these stocks. In a vector vest, we favor bottom left to upper right movement, the smoother the better, for not only the price, but also the earnings performance of the company. The upper line on this graph, the yellow line, is the valuation line, and it's very simple to see then whether or not the stock is currently over or undervalued. And here's a good example of how that rising earnings performance drove a rising valuation and a rising stock price, I might add. So let's scroll through a couple of these. Again, value above price. And that relationship fairly consistent through these top VST stocks, although notice how Rite Aid, Rite Aid has these lines converging and so is fully valued but it introduces this concept that you can have degrees of being over or undervalued. Notice the separation between homeowners, price, and value. And here with VIPS, it pops out right away when the price is above that valuation. Closing our graphs, we'll go back to the stock viewer, and I can resort the whole stock value by value by simply clicking on the header for the column. I've now resorted the whole database of 8,000 stocks, value descending, so the highest values are at the top of the list. 
Of course, this brings the highest valuations to the top of the list, which tend to be indexes. And if I sorted by value ascending, I'd bring to the top of the list the stocks with the smallest valuations. Again, in this case, a bias toward low dollar stocks versus a sort descending, which has a bias toward large dollar stocks. Neither of which is particularly useful for finding overvalued or undervalued stocks because it's all about the relationship between price and value. Now, there are several custom field sorts built into the stock viewer that can be helpful. And what they share in common is that they're looking for this relationship between value and price. Let's click on the sort button. And if I hit the drop down arrow, there are a lot of custom sorts and you can build your own with the custom field builder. But I'm right at the V's here and I have value, value minus price, and value divided by price. I'm going to sort on value minus price. Let's click OK. In the first column I have the actual sum of the value minus the price in real dollars. Of course this still has that bias toward high price stocks but more helpful would be to analyze the ratio between value and price. So let's choose value divided by price. With this sort, I've brought to the top of the list stocks with the widest multiple between value and price. Again, this has a bias, this time toward low price stocks. So what's my best solution? The Unisearch tool. Let's open the Unisearch tool. I'm going to scroll down to the Search's Prudent group. And let's just start with the top VST stocks. And with our search parameters, we've eliminated any stocks below a dollar or below 100,000 shares of average volume. We have no contra ETFs, no indexes or pink sheets, and no contra contra ETFs. And of course, we have a VST descending sort. Let's close our toolbar. If I run this search, I should get the same list as the stock viewer, save any that had been filtered out by our search parameters. And again, if we drag value next to price, they're all undervalued to fully valued with the exceptions of VIPS and LBMH. Now within the Unisearch tool, if I change my sort, Again, to that same value divided by price sort, descending, I'll get at the top of the list the stocks that have the biggest differential between value and price, but I've eliminated some of the junk by getting rid of the indexes and the dollar and the penny stocks. So just looking at our table of results, we have now multiples of almost 3 to 1 at the top of our list. Here we see the current value and the current price for each of those stocks. We do see we have some higher dollar values. Let's take a look at the charts. And oh my, I do have price below value. That's good. Earnings is trending upward, but price is definitely trending downward. And as we scroll through some of these graphs, I've met the criteria that the value is above the price by quite a distance. but I gave up something in my quest for finding stocks that were undervalued. I gave up that VST analysis. If I close the graphs, let's go back and look at some of the RS values and some of the RT values. And nine of the 10 are sell recommended. So how can I find undervalued stocks but retain that VST analysis? Well, let's first turn the sort back to VST descending. And I'm going to add a new parameter. In my open parameter cell, I'll left click, I'll hover on stocks, and I'll go to vector vest fields, and let's use that custom field that I showed you earlier value divided by price. For my operator, I'm going to say greater than a custom value of 1. This means that if I divide the stock's value by the price, I'll get a 
quotient higher than one, which means the value has to be above the price. And now if we run this search, then we find buy rated stocks that have some nice fundamentals in the VST system that are also higher in value than their price. And if we look at their graphs, we're back to that nice bottom left to upper right price and earnings action. And here we have Rite Aid again, which was fully valued. So I've not specified the interval between price and value, only that value is above price currently. And for the most part, these certainly are. And to be fair, I could have gotten similar results with a simple value minus price, showing that the value is higher than the price in real dollar terms. But by using value divided by price, I can set the threshold for the multiple. So for instance, in saying that, that their sum is greater than 1, I can say that it's greater than 2. In other words, the value is twice that of price or more. If I run that search, notice now my valuations are at least twice as high as my price. If I graph these guys, notice the interval between current price and value. And of course, we're still favoring stocks that have bottom left to upper right movement. The smoother, the better. Now, some were better than others, but again, we still have the power of VST, the VST analysis and sort, bringing the better players to the top of the list. Although I notice that I have more hold and sell rated stocks in this sample. Of course, you can try other values. For instance, I could change my custom value here to 1.05. So I want value to be greater than 5% above price. And of course, that was our threshold for fairly valued. So if I run that search again, again, I now have all buy rated stocks. I have much better RT numbers here. If we take a look at these charts, we should consistently see that value is 5% above current price. So now that we've established how to identify undervalued stocks, we can minimize our risk as the market climbs its wall of worry. But should we always favor the most undervalued stocks? Are those the better investment? The key to understanding that question lies in understanding the difference between value and relative value. Value is telling us what is the stock currently worth right now. Are you getting a bargain or are you paying a premium? Relative value is a little bit different. Let's click on the top stock and look at that stock analysis report again. Here we read that RV is an indicator of long-term price appreciation potential. This indicator is far superior to a simple comparison of price and value because it's computed from an analysis of projected price appreciation three years out. It's forward-looking. It also includes corporate bond rates, interest rates, and risk. RV solves the riddle of whether it's preferable to buy high-growth, high-PE stocks or low-growth, low-PE stocks. VectorVest favors the purchase of stocks with RV ratings above 1. So value only looks at today as a slice in time. It does not take risk into account or attempt to determine the future price of a stock as does RV. RV also allows us to compare all stocks on a consistent basis or scale. 0 to 2 regardless of dollar size. Ratings above 1 indicate favorable price appreciation potential. Ratings below 1 are either overpriced, have lower non-existent earnings, and or growth rates. Let's take a look in the stock viewer and sort by RV. Notice our value to price ratio. If we scroll to the right a little bit, notice our earnings growth values. If we sort RV ascending, notice our value to price ratio. And notice our earnings growth rates. 
Now, I'm not going to trade just on one or two indicators, but one thing I do know is I'm going to favor undervalued stocks that have good RV scores. And that's the power of the VectorVest system, a fact-based, data-driven system of analysis that points to the truth and cuts through the fog of the worry warts and the blue skyers alike. Well, that'll conclude our presentation for this evening. I do hope you found it profitable. As a reminder, we will have a live Q&A webcast on Monday at 2 o'clock Eastern. To register for that webcast, either go to the views or go to the link here at VectorVest.com on the events tab. I'll be there to take your questions. I look forward to it. Those sessions are a lot of fun. But for now, we'll conclude our strategy presentation for this evening. I thank you for being with us. Please give us a call on product support if you have any questions. And of course, you can review any of our previous presentations in the VectorVest University. And with that, I wish you a good night and have a great weekend.